Howdy, howdy, hi, hi. It is Lunar New Year, so you best believe you better get your head on and your gold, if you've got any, and come on an adventure. So interestingly enough, the Lunar New Year and Spring Festival is not celebrated at all in Japan. Um, they adopted the Gregorian calendar in like the 1800s or something, but because of Setsuburn, um, which is what I was talking about in my last video, which is based off the lunar calendar, it's the first day of spring in the lunar calendar, because they still celebrate Setsuburn, I thought, oh, maybe they've just kept some of the big celebrations from the lunar calendar. And Spring Festival is, uh, without a doubt, the biggest occasion in the lunar calendar but there's literally nothing going on really in Tokyo there's no decorations like it's very very normal you'll know if you've ever lived in parts of the world that celebrate spring festival um, I've lived in China and I've also lived in Hong Kong when you get to approaching spring festival you know everywhere is decorated and then the the weeks of the holiday nothing is open everywhere's closed everyone is celebrating it is the biggest public holiday that there is but I did some research and I found out that there's a Chinatown in a place called Yokohama which is about an hour and 40 minutes two hours away from where I live um, so I'm getting on the Train and I'm gonna go to Chinatown there because I am sure there will be celebrations there for Spring Festival. Also have to give a little disclaimer and um, I have always referred to uh, Lunar New Year or Spring Festival as Chinese New Year and um, just because my family's heritage my dad is Chinese so the Lunar New Year or the Spring Festival that I celebrated was Chinese and um, with the Chinese customs and the Chinese traditions so that's why you'll probably hear me refer to to it as a lot of different things because I, I am trying to broaden my vocabulary now. Obviously, we really do acknowledge that the lunar cal calendar is celebrated by so many more people than just China. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to break a habit of a lifetime because for me, it has always been Chinese New Year or Spring Festival. Um, so yeah, bear with me. Chinese New Year has always been one of my favorite holidays because it's I mean it's just so different to English New Year in English New Year I feel like it's all about you know you set out like how you're gonna be in the new year and it's very restrictive and like everyone goes on a diet or gives up alcohol or like it's a lot about giving up whereas like Chinese New Year is all about abundance and prosperity you know you get given money on Chinese New Year I mean who doesn't love to be given money and you eat all these different foods you know to just you, you kind of ring in the new year with abundance and I just really really like that I've always liked celebrating Chinese New Year there are however some slightly wacky superstitions that I will admit I picked up whilst I was living in China and living in Hong Kong um, so for example yesterday I completely cleaned my apartment and um, took out my bins swept my floors because today on the first day of Spring Festival you are not meant to take your bins out or sweep your floors because it's kind of symbolic of like sweeping away but um good luck um, and that obviously is not how you want to set the tone for the new year also I really hope this video gets to you in time but do not wash your hair on the first day of Chinese New Year so it's the 10th of February so don't wash your hair on that day because the word for hair in Chinese also sounds like the word for wealth so they believe that washing your hair washes away the wealth for the whole year so just have dirty hair okay you don't need to wash it just slick it back okay this is train one of three wish me luck and it only took this video to because other people are talking to. One train down, two to go. Gotta find my next line. It's busy today and it's actually a bit confusing because on my maps the line that I was looking for says that it was purple but actually the whole line is orange and then you have to like go to a specific platform to get on the for it to like change to the purple line i know that i should be able to do this without colors but i find colors so much easier but i think i found it look at that for timing Woo Woo, that one was long and i was crowded and i was standing up but we have one more train to go i'm actually in yokohama already so woo, i made it but um, I want to go directly to Chinatown and there's a train that takes you directly there. Um, and this next one is going to be here in like five minutes and it's rapid. So I really want to get on it, but it's busy and I need to get over to the platform. Timing. Yay! 
I feel like I'm severely dehydrated as well. I was on the train like. <laughs> so get me some conveni ASAP. I need a drink. I think I'm going in the right direction. Oh, and there's a 7-Eleven. Yay! Guys, I said 7-Eleven. I'm in Family Mart. Anyway. Family Mart, Family Mart, Family Mart. Here we come. It's a quite a slow pace we're all moving at. All right, we're warming up. We've already found food stalls. We've got longevity buns. Woo. Oh my gosh, the cute merch has already started. Look at this longevity bun. <laughs> This is so fun. I think this is the main street now going towards the park. Oh my gosh, they have Shengjin Bao. <laughs> Yay. Oh my gosh. I just, I, I want to eat everything. I don't know where to start. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure why that Shengjin Bao is green, but I want to try it. You know how I was saying before, there's loads of superstitions and traditions around Lunar New Year. The foods that you eat are a huge part of that as well. So um, there's there's so many foods that you eat. In Hong Kong, it's really, really common to eat lobako, which is like a radish uh, turnip cake thing. And then it's really popular to eat dumplings because they kind of look like the gold ingots. Um, so obviously, like you'll be wealthy. And then it's also really popular to eat really 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 long noodles and don't cut them up because the noodles are actually called longevity noodles and it kind of symbolizes your lifeline so never cut your noodles um, and then what else oh fish a lot of people eat fish because the word for fish you sounds like surplus as well the same word for surplus so again it's, it's all symbolic um but i personally like to eat dumplings and make dumplings um, and noodles as well this place is an absolute maze it's just streets upon streets and then i don't really know where to start or what to do or where's good ah. you can get your fortunes read for the new year i already read mine <laughs> not a great year for the oxes um, amongst us but it's fine this little pagoda is so nice, and they have such cute statues. There's also a little area over there that I think is like a performance area, but uh, photography is prohibited um, and nothing is going on just yet. But I think there might be like lion dances and stuff like that, which would be really cool. So I'm going to listen out for firecrackers and stuff like that. But first things first, let's eat. Okay, I don't know if this place is famous for Shengjian Bao, which is this, but look at the queue. It starts there, it goes all the way back and then behind me. Like there's still, there's still people behind me. I just joined the line because I'm a sheep, sheeple. And I I wanted to know, is it really that good? So I'm gonna get full change in mouth from here and I'll tell you my verdict. A quick Google search has in fact informed me that this is one of the top places to get Sheng Jin Bao. Uh, Sheng Jin Bao is like a pork dumpling that's really popular in Shanghai. Um, the way that it's cooked is really interesting. It's steamed and fried. So the bottom is really crispy. The top is really, really soft. And then inside is like pork that releases um, soup. So it's got little balls of gelatin in the, the raw mixture. And then when they steam it, the gelatin liquefies liquid goes to liquid <laughs> and it creates soup so i'll show you when i eat it i'm not sure if you can really see because there's a lot of condensation on the window but those are the little dumplings in there and then he'll put water in and then he'll put that lid on top of it so when they put the water in and they put the lid on top that's obviously like the steaming and then the bottom part is like getting crispy because it's it's being fried on the bottom of it. so good i also just google translated this the green ones are seafood i don't know why they're green <laughs> that's strange to me but I'm gonna go OG pork. Wow, that is fast and furious. They're literally just chucking them out of there. Um, I put vinegar on mine and then I'm gonna get some choppies. Okay, it's so busy. I've just stood my phone on a tree, uh, which I feel like is quite resourceful. I should maybe start carrying a tripod with me. Okay, here we go, taste test. This is what they look like. Um, they're quite small, but let's see. So when you want to eat these, 
you don't want to burn yourself with the soup inside and the soup inside is like nuclear so you get it like this oh see how the soup is like leaking out so you want to drink that soup so turn it around and like it's good I'm being jostled. Mm. Mm. It's good. So that's what the inside looks like. It's just pork filling. Crispy on the bottom. It can see there and then soft on the top. Do you see the soup in there? Do you see it? So if you don't bite a little hole into it and like slurp the soup out and you just bite straight into it, it literally explodes everywhere. <laughs> and it's kind of a baptism of fire of being Shang back. Good job you have me to save you the embarrassment and the third degree burns. <laughs> but sometimes it happens to the best of us. I thought I'd slurped all the soup out. I've burned the nut. I give her a solid seven out of 10. It's really, really good for a Shenzhen bao outside of Shanghai. But when you've eaten in Shanghai, it is so hard to find one that even remotely compares. They are just so good there and they're so cheap. That was, I think that was like 650 yen, which isn't expensive. Well, mm, it is kind of expensive actually. Um, because in China, for four, it's like seven kwai or something, which is like 90p. What should we eat next? Um, hello, Hong Kong Road. Don't mind if I do. Hey, what are you doing here? You're from Sichuan, not Hong Kong. This is the uh, little back roll that I was talking about, the turnip cake. There is definitely a Chinese dragon underneath there. Or a lion from the lion dance. Well, that's sad. I guess I missed it. I didn't hear any drums. Or firecrackers. I should make more noise. So many places are selling this deep fried porcupine bun. Consider me intrigued. I'm getting one. Oh no, I broke some of his spines off already. Oh, I've hurt him. But he's cute, hey? I feel kind of mean eating him. Yeah. <laughs> Inside is kind of like custard, but like Japanese custard. Not like it's not like a lion like bao. It's kind of like creme pat inside a deep fried bun. It's delicious. I kind of want noodles, but I also don't want to have a sit down meal. I don't want to go into a restaurant and sit down. So I think I'm just going to keep eating from street vendors. Uh, but I don't know what I want. Okay, I've come to this Hong Kong dim sum spot. They've actually got quite a few things, but I think I'm going to get a chung fan and then maybe just a meat bao. I got my little bao bao. It's fresh out of the steamer. It's so hot, but here I go. I didn't get any filling. Mm. Fluffy. Mm. This is the inside. It's got pork and mushrooms and other things inside it. It's absolutely delicious. I have to wait in the queue for my um, churn fan that I got because I think it gets made fresh, which is really good. Um, so we said I have to wait 10 minutes. Just seen on the floor, there's like remnants of um, firecrackers. So last night they must have had firecrackers to bring in the new year, which is so fun. Kind of wish I, I was here, but it's so far away. Yay, I got my food and they have a little place to stand, which is so nice. Um, so inside is shrimp and then the outside is made from 
rice flour. Um, so yeah, it's called Cheng Fan, which Cheng is the word for sausage, Fan, the word for rice, so a sausage of rice. <laughs> Yum. Oh yeah, that slaps. Oh yeah, that's so good. Because sometimes when this is made badly, the um, the coating, the casing is really really thick and it's like chewy. This is perfect. Mmm. Hold sick. How true. Delicious. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my gosh, I can hear drums. I think there might be a dance going on. Wait. I can't see a thing that's happening. But I can hear the drums. Oh, 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 I can see it. I can see a lion. It's really hard to get a clear video because it is so insanely busy. What he's trying to do is basically get the red packet, which is in the door frame of the restaurants and the shops. Um, it's called Hong Bao or Lai Si, depending on if you're speaking Mandarin or Cantonese. And the red packet has money inside it and you get given it on Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year. Um, and so that's what the, the lion is trying to do. Just a little strawberry snack. <laughs> Yay! momentary distraction because the lion came again um, but these strawberries are so popular in mainland China and I honestly was so intrigued to get them here in Japan because the strawberries are already so sweet here in Japan I'm like oh, what would it be like if you put hardened sugar around it can confirm it's absolutely freaking delicious I found a Chinese supermarket which is so exciting because international ingredients are really quite hard to get in Japan and um, so I'm gonna pick up a few bits before I go back home straight in my basket Yes, I've had such a hard time finding sriracha. That's gonna come with me. Yay, I got my little haul, woohoo! What a great afternoon, I am pooped. I'm gonna get back on the train to start my long journey home. But Yokohama Chinatown, next level. So, so good. Would 100% recommend if you are in and around Tokyo and you need a little Chinatown fix, Yokohama is the place to be. Whoa, look at that sky. What a way to end such a gorgeous day. I've had the best time. Thank you so much for coming along on the journey with me. All that's left to say is Gongo Factory, Sunny and Final, Happy Lunar New Year. Bye!